I was an active child despite having various medical obstacles from the very start of my life, but we always took them in stride. However, third grade was different. Three surgeries over the course of that school year. The first surgery took place around this time in the fall, which was unsuccessful of moving a benign tumor in my left leg. But then it began to grow back, doubling in size. So surgery two was scheduled over Christmas break. And this was an experimental surgery with the hopes that they could go in and kill the tumor. Afterwards, it meant that we would have to wait and see for several months. But I remember a day or so after that surgery ended and I was able to slowly venture into the hospital hallways and into the children's hangout room. And it was such a blessing to be with other children Most of them were suffering from various forms of cancer, killing the hairs on their heads or limbs or immune systems or even taking their lives. The pediatric oncology floor at Duke Hospital was not a depressing scene, though, for my young eyes. It was a positive place of children. Although pushing IV poles It was filled with an abundance of cheer in that Christmas time. This became my community away from home. There was this connection of our shared health concerns and this great hope for healing. In the gospel today, we have two healing miracles, two opening moments. The first is a Gentile woman who has changed Jesus' ministry approach and priorities when she asked him to expand his ministry to the Gentiles, like her daughter. The second was Jesus opening the ears of a deaf man. You see, I think that this mother's lesson to Jesus teaches him and prepares him to go to this next location and to offer more prayers of healing. Jesus had become open himself. And so when he turns to the deaf man and says, be opened, he was living into the lesson that he had just learned and acquired by that Gentile mother. It reminds us that even Jesus changes his mind to follow God's will in order to care for the community. Now, the background of this gospel is important to understand that Jesus came to these two Gentile locations because he wanted to escape the crowds that were now following him from town to town. He was there to simply take a break, take a break from his main ministry, which was to come and to share God's good news with the children of Israel, that is, the Jews. But yet this desperate mother pleads with Jesus to heal her daughter, and Jesus says, let the little children, the Jews, to be fed first. And then after I feed all of them, then um, I will start reaching out to the Gentiles, because it's not fair to give that food to you now. It's like throwing it to the dogs, which is a term used for Gentiles. We would be called Gentiles. It's fascinating that she stands her ground and replies, yes, but even the dogs under the table get the children's crumbs. Jesus is surprised by her argument, and he's moved to widen his community focus of care Jesus heard in her needs of seeking the very nourishment that he was giving the children of Israel now needs to go to all those who come to him. You see, sometimes when people are so hungry for healing that they're willing to even just take the crumbs. This was new territory, and it's a reminder that God is helping 
Jesus in his ministry and reminds us in our own ministry that we move from crumbs being given out to those we see as second or less. And instead, out of God's abundance of grace came this alternating love to give to all. To give this love to all who are open to receive it. So back to my background story, there was a humorous moment that took place in my third surgery that was in the warm summer months. The second surgery didn't work. And so the doctor was in there to remove this regrown um, benign tumor in my now nine-year-old leg. And evidently the surgery took longer than they expected because sometime in the middle of the surgery, I woke up, and I remember opening my eyes and seeing all the eyes um, of those gathered around the surgical table, bright-eyed themselves, and I heard a voice say, oh my God, he's awake. I do not think that they were praying. I think that they were really shocked. And then someone quickly took the gas mask and put it over my face, and I fell back asleep. But it was wonderful as a child to revisit with the doctor days later if that actually happened or if I dreamed it, and he confirmed that it did, and we had a wonderful laugh together. I would eventually recover, return to being an active boy about to go into the fourth grade. And yes, the medical side of healing had worked. The science had worked. But it was the spiritual healing outside of the hospital that opened my young eyes to God's power found in the work of God's people. We had finished that Christmas vacation in the hospital in Durham and come back to Wilmington, my hometown, resumed all of our regular routines, including going to church every week. We'd always been an active family in the life of church. But unfortunately, in that church's story and history, the leadership had overextended their finances and built an enormous gym and family center that they couldn't afford. And meanwhile, all of these months that we're waiting for news from the doctors of what happens next, we're also waiting to hear from our church community. But their focus had moved to just raising money for a building. In my young mind, I wondered, was God punishing me over and over again? I wondered, where was God? I wondered, where was God's community? We had some great neighbors. His last names are the churches. And the churches saw our pain and our suffering as a family during this year-long ordeal and continued to invite us to their church. And yet we were not open to make that move. We were not open to this new idea. We had this hope that our current church would eventually come around. And I was still there even um, in the time that would follow singing in their boys' choir and attending scouts in addition to Sunday worship. Finally, on Easter Sunday, we accepted their invitation, and we went to the church's Episcopal church. And I'll never forget walking in, every single person I met looked me in the eye and said, you're Brent Melton. We have been praying for you for a very, very long time. We had found our home. We changed our own course and discovered the power of healing. Although there was still medical work to be done, I felt already healed from the community's love to us who were strangers. We found a commitment. We found the faith, not just carried out in word by the people, but in their actions of how they care for those that they've never even met before. And they would be with me through my last surgery journey, and they would be the ones who almost 20 years later would sponsor me and send me to seminary.
Today's gospel is absolutely amazing that we hear the only time when it's recorded that Jesus changes his mind. Jesus becomes open. He leaves the woman after healing her daughter and heals the deaf man. God is asked to intercede, and Jesus commands, be opened. You see, friends, I think God is always waiting to break through our sometimes misguided ministry focuses or barriers or resistance. God is always waiting to get us to a place where we can experience God's love waiting to get us to the community in which God's love will break through by the faith of those who worship and live there. Not just for the people that sit there every week, but also for those who may come in saying we're seeking God's grace and we'll even just take a crumb of it if you're willing to give it to us. And that desire to come in, to grasp hold of the crumb with the hope that God can do amazing things in our lives helps to open us up to God's grace and help to usher in God's kingdom. Amen.